All right, this is my um, restored antique wood stove. I just picked it up a couple days ago, and it was kind of a rust bucket. In about 30 seconds, I'll show you how it looked, and I'll show you the beginning of the process, how I refurbished and restored it. It's an antique, but it's not really an antique because this was only made in the 70s. Um, this one was a, a copy of the original. It's nothing special. It's just a little project it did in a couple days. I wanted to have a wood stove in the backyard, similar to another one that I have. I have a little pot belly stove. I wanted to have a bigger one. I wanted to be pretty. I wanted to leave it outside um, in the rain and everything. Well, so I thought that the best way to do that is to grind this one down to bare metal and to get all the rust off and refurbish it. And that's what I did. So check out the video and I'll show you how it looked and I'll show you the progress that I made. Hope it's worth your time. Okay, so yesterday I picked up this wood burning stove. It's an antique. Um, I got it for next to nothing. So my plan here is to take it apart and give it some fresh paint and clean up all the nickel. If it even is nickel. I don't think it's nickel because after I purchased it, I realized that, well actually before, after I got there, it says parlor stove, but it is made in Taiwan. So after doing some internet research last night, I figured out that these were made in the 70s to replicate the ones that were actually made in the 1800s or early 1900s. I originally agreed, I made the lady an offer because I thought it was different. I thought it was a real antique and when I got there, it was kind of like a piece of junk really to tell you the truth. I was like, ugh, you know, I don't want this. So I made her an offer for half the original offer that she accepted and she said, yeah, go ahead. So, okay, I thought, well, it's worth it for that. Quick little project. Gonna make this thing look a little bit nicer than it is because it probably looks like a piece of crap we are looking at right now. But you know what the funny thing is? After I got it home and I started looking at it, I really liked this a lot. <laughs> Even though I wasn't happy with it there and driving home, looking at it in the back of the truck, I was like, man, this thing's not that good. It's just like a piece of junk, but you know, after it's at home, it sure is really nice. So I bet you it's gonna be a lot nicer once I get it cleaned up. For the most part, this thing is complete. You'll see this door opens. And um, last night I, I rigged up this little chimney. It has an oval shape here that I was able to take a, um, a coffee can and mold it to fit over the opening for the chimney to get this six inch pipe on that I had. Of course it's hokey right now because I just tried it out. I had a small fire, I wanted to check it out. But um, it's missing the part that you put the wood on. But here is also missing a pin. It's not a big deal. I'll just get a new pin. And um, I'm gonna go to Lowe's or wherever I'm gonna go and get some paint, high temperature paint. I'm gonna take everything apart. All this comes off here. And I guess you could put whatever here for your water, your tea, to heat that up. This is my quick little, hopefully one day project. Somebody, whoever had it before, already put some new bolts in here. I'm not really too happy with these bolts. You know, who knows how long they'll last for, but Apparently these things were a couple hundred bucks in the 70s. I don't know exactly, I saw some numbers, $125 and I saw other ones 400. But I think it's pretty cool. This part is kind of like really rusted shut. I, I was poking around in here last night looking at it and it looks like somebody put concrete in between here. The damper is supposed to open, probably to seal it up. But um, so the, you can see here, has all this crud and once I start taking this apart it's gonna have a lot more crud but the whole idea with this stove I'm not gonna put it inside the house I'm gonna put it outside you'll see over here I have another stove it's just a little pot belly stove had this thing probably 15 years it sat outside in the garden for a long time but a few years ago I hooked it up check this out the chimney goes I think it's 12 feet up um, but this thing really kicks butt On a nice cold night, come out here, I have some wood that I loaded up, and we have our chairs and stuff, we kick back, but inside the wine barrel I have a lot of other pieces of wood, little trimmings that I could feed the pot belly stove. But as you can see, it, it holds an 18 inch piece of wood, so it's going to hold a lot more wood. Um, everything is pretty much here, except for the part, like I said, the grate or whatever that you put your wood on inside here. So I'm gonna make something, the guy gave me something to try to rig it up. Anyways, this is the future little project here, try to make it real quick. And like I said, it's not a true antique from the 1800s or 1900s, earlys. This is just a Chinese knockoff or 
Taiwan knockoff. But hey, whatever, it's still almost 40 years old. If it's from the early 70s. Okay, so 40 years old. It still looks pretty good. I mean, some people probably like the patina that it has now. But I think it's going to look better if I buff it out. So, I'm going to start the process. I wanted to get some video of it here in the sun. Kind of give an idea of what it looks like. This is all loose. Now, this little chimney I did, like I said, burn last night. Here, let me take this off. I'll see what this looks like. So you can see it's an oval shape. It's like two and a half inches or three inches by seven or seven and a half. So either I'm gonna be able to find an adapter or I'm gonna have to rig it up like I did here. Something that'll work. But this does the trick, but I don't wanna have this. All right, so besides, after I paint it, besides it looking a lot cleaner and nicer after it's painted, another reason to do that and for me is because I do want to leave it outside and I don't want this thing getting really like rusty and being destroyed. This right here goes in. I'm going to take this whole thing apart, so we'll check it out from there. Um, but this thing here, this wood burning stove, you know, I don't even care. It sits out here. It is rusty. It doesn't bother me at all. Look at the ashtray is. The new power stove doesn't have an ashtray, but um, nothing's going on with this thing. It just keeps going and lasting and lasting. Uh, I don't remember how much I paid for this. It's been a lot of years. But you can find them on Craigslist if you do a search under wood stove and search around your local area. So now I'm going to roll it up in the garage and take it apart, clean it up, and paint it. So hopefully that wasn't too much talking. <laughs> This is supposed to have some bolts. It's supposed to have some bolts in here that it's missing. So it's okay for me. I could take it off pretty easy. It just actually lifts up. But when I assemble it again after it's all painted, I'm gonna get some new bolts for it. Similar to these, but probably some stainless steel ones. All right, this door on the hinge has these little pins right here. You can see. So I'll just use a hammer and a little thing to smack it out. All right, so then this, this will come off with a bolt. That looks pretty simple. And then as you can see, all this will just come off, so I should be able to get all these, the each piece off. Pretty simple, really. I have a lot of like, corrosion and crud right here. I'm not really sure what that is. I'll clean this up with a wire wheel. I'll gr grind that off or whatever. Okay, so I have no idea how it's gonna work out. Well, I took it outside and I kind of cleaned out most of the ashes. I dusted it out. It looks horrible. That's okay. But you see these nuts and bolts on this half over here? I started removing them. So I think I have them all loose. I'm going to see how what happens if I take this side off. Cool. This should be pretty easy. I think I could have this put back together by tomorrow. Say a day and a half or so worth of work. I mean, really, it's not that many that much work or that many hours is going to be involved. This is all rusted shut or something. Like I said, I think they put concrete in there. But whatever, it's going to be nice when I'm done. And this is what I'm left with. This piece actually will detach from the legs here. You can see this plate right here. So this is going to be a little bit of work. This is the front door to getting this all freed up and loose. Right now, it's, I think it has concrete inside there. So that's going to be a little bit of work. Here's the lift door. I'll just clean it up with a wire brush. Get all this crud out. Looks like rust and just crud. Yeah, this is the part that got me when I saw this. I was like, you know what? 
I am not interested in this wood stove. But eh, I made an offer, a really cheap offer, and she's like, okay. I said, well, all right. <laughs> so I got another project here. This would be cool. I'll try to polish this out. This fiberglass material, whatever it is, I have no idea what that is. Uh, I might just leave that because I don't have a choice. Maybe I'll paint it or something. So move it on down the line. Now one of these, I think this one here, I painted this already with a um, wood stove flat black. Yeah, it has to be this one. So this is kind of an idea of what it will be when I'm done. Uh, I'm thinking I might go back though and get some satin black instead of just regular flat black because I think satin having a little bit of a sheen is going to be better than just straight flat like this. And then this, just of course, I'll just use the SOS pads or something. Um, and I'll try to clean up some of this chrome. If it was real antique, if it was a real antique, an original, it, this would be nickel. But there's no way that this is nickel. And I guess if worst comes to worst, I could just repaint it. And here's the top. This is the part of the chimney part that I'm going to have to fabricate something. Not really that big of a deal, I guess. This is the original color, I imagine. Looks pretty nice. And here's the door. This part of the, another damper thing or whatever you want to call it to let the air in. I have to get a pin to put in here. But the good thing is at least they have it. So that's really a big deal for me, I think. So I have to get another one of these pins also because this door is missing a pin. And again, this is all loose and cheap. This is pitted so bad, there's no way I'm going to be able to clean that up. So either I clean it up the best I can and just let it be and, and leave this, or I paint it all. I haven't decided. We'll have to just take it one step at a time. But it's just going to be a cheap little project. Nothing special. And this I'll remove. This is the right side of the stove itself. This I'll remove so I can get a nice um, finish underneath here. But you can see it needs a lot of cleaning. It's too bad I don't have a tank or something. I could just hot dip these. But I don't. Okay, so this whole cleaning operation is going to get shifted outside. I definitely don't want to make a mess in the garage. And the most important thing is I don't want to breathe this stuff in when I'm grinding on it. So as long as I'm outdoors, it's more than likely it's going to blow away any dust that I make. So there's nothing fun about grinding or cleaning. So here's my little setup. Here's where I'm going to have it. And I'm going to put everything out here and get started. And we'll see how it looks after I get it all cleaned up. I'm sure it's going to take some time. Look how this stuff is just caked on here. It's pretty nasty. I don't even know if I could finish it up in the time that I thought. But I'm going to give it a shot. This thing is kind of like funky too, with these screws. All right, so I have everything out here. I divided this into two categories. Okay, the first category being the hard stuff, the nasty stuff. So this is the worst as it gets right here. This is pretty nasty, okay? This is gonna be the hardest thing to do. And then you come along the end, head and right. This is pretty easy. It's gonna get easier from there. I just have to get all these little cracks cleaned up. But as you work your way this way, these are gonna be a lot easier to do. There's not really that much buildup or corrosion on these things. A piece like this, it should only take 15 minutes of cleaning. This is by far the easiest one right here. This one's easy right here. Okay, so this one's all right, a medium, but instead of starting with the one that you would think is going to be the one I want to start with, which is this one. I'm going to start with some of the easier pieces so I know what to expect and what the finish should be. So when I work my way down here to the left, when I get to this, I'll have a general idea of, you know, whatever, what, I, what has to be done. But this stand, I really need to tighten up. But anyways, I'll get a couple pieces cleaned up. And after I clean them up and prep it for the high temperature paint, 
I'll probably use lacquer thinner or denatured alcohol or maybe even just some good old fashioned soap and water and I'll clean up everything and prepare it for the paint. I'll show you some of the tools I'm using over this way. So this is pretty much it. I have a hammer and some chisels. This will get some of these little chunky pieces out here. And some wire wheels, variety of wire wheels, no big deal. A cheap old brush. Of course I need ear protection, eye protection. I'm gonna use the drill. Most of the wire wheels, I guess. These all would be with a drill right here. And then um, I have some grinders and stuff with wheels on here. It's real important when you use one of these is definitely want to wear eye protection because these little suckers will shoot out and they'll, they'll sting you. Um, and I have another grinder and some other stuff. But this is mostly it. So nothing fancy or romantic here. It's just going to be clean. So I'm going to get to it and I'll show you a piece. Maybe I should start with the easiest piece which would be this one since it already looks good to me. We'll take a look how it looks. It's gonna look the same. Pretty confident of that. But I'll start with this and I'll work my way around. And I suppose this is it. Can't really tell exactly with this piece because it was already pretty good looking. But I'm gonna attack this. You can see I already started with this. I chipped this out. This must be some sort of a sealant they put in or something to try to block some of the air. But you can see the difference here. This I did, this I didn't. So this is gonna make a considerable amount of difference. But I'm gonna get to it. Okay, so this is the face of the stove and here's the damper. Now I finally kind of freed it up a little bit. I've been hitting it with a, a hammer and chisel. But doesn't that look like concrete? I don't know what somebody did here. I mean, yeah, it's not a hundred year old stove, but it's still at least 40 years old. That looks like concrete to me. So maybe somebody's trying to seal it. So I'm going to continue trying to free this thing up, get it loose and clean it up and paint it. Okay, so I have some of this stuff cleaned. Maybe you can't tell, I'm still gonna soak it and scrub it with the SOS pad. So these are a lot better. Here's the front, I got this all freed up with all the concrete that was around there. The problem with this though is I can't remove this because the bolt that goes through I think is rusted. So I'm gonna probably try to soak it with some PB Blaster. Um, otherwise I got in here pretty clean. I might just call it good. door I took the um, glass or whatever you want to call that off clean this up this one I saw have to do here I'm kind of working my way around This is good. I still have these two pieces. These are the ends. And of course this gnarly one. I don't think this is going to be that bad though. Okay, after about four hours of solid grinding on these things. Constantly cleaning. I think that's good enough. I ended up using a grinder. One of these ones. And got a bunch, like a, I don't know, a four pack or whatever. And these did the job pretty good so the next step now I'm going to get a big bucket of water and SOS all these I don't know what the Brillo pad or something this is good enough I don't think it's gonna matter I'm not gonna waste my time because I'm just gonna burn in here anyways but I did it quite a bit all this the um, anything that's exposed is perfect except for this bottom part I don't want to say it's perfect it's not even close to perfect but yeah, it's about 60% of being perfect compared to what it was so now, like I said, I'm just going to set up that bucket and scrub them down. I did set up yesterday just messing around a um, sandblast cabinet I have. And I was messing around with that, but it just takes up too much time. But I was able to use the sandblast cabinet since I'm not going to remove this damper piece right here. 
because if I try to remove this bolt, it'll break. And I don't want to have that hook. So I put this in the sandblast cabinet and I was able to get in some of these cracks. So that helps. Yeah, like I said, four hours of non-stop cleaning and grinding and, you know, most important thing is wear your eye protection and ear protection and a dust mask. Can't even say I wore the dust mask the whole time. These still are going to get cleaned. Haven't even touched this yet. That's easy stuff. But the main nasty, rusted, nasty, cruddy part is done. Alright, so after I got it all clean, I used some SOS pads and I scrubbed everything down real good. And but the thing is, I still make my fingers a little dirty, so it's not perfectly clean. So I'm gonna, I got some oven cleaner and I'm gonna take this, I'll spray all these parts and I'll let it soak for a little bit and then um, I'll just hose it down. And that'll pretty much strip it 100%, get all the wax off, get all the grease and anything so that my new fresh paint will stick. This stuff is nasty. I mean, I'm sure the EPA is going to outlaw this stuff pretty soon. Just a matter of time. It'll strip off paint and everything. Oh, I shouldn't worry too much about the inside, but look at that. You can already see some of the rust and stuff coming off. Oh, yeah. That's sick. All right, so this stuff will even burn me too. This oven cleaner, it's some nasty stuff. Whew. I'll just use a regular SOS pad. 